Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me this week for another Musical Mondays video, or uh, maybe I'll start calling it Monday Night Live, I don't know, somebody threw that out there. Um, I'm so excited that you decided to take a little bit of time to, uh, to join, with, join me tonight. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is David Rao, I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, if you're watching live on Facebook, on Instagram, if you're watching live on Instagram Live. Um, and you can also find my ideas on Pinterest and Twitter and a variety of other platforms when you search my name, uh, David Rao, or the, the name Make Moments Matter Music Ed. Um, you can also find me on my, my podcast, which has always been hilarious for me to say, um, but my podcast is Make Moments Matter Music Ed, a music education podcast. Um, so you can find ideas there if you'd like to. Um, just one quick recap. Uh, I realized... I rushed home today after school because I realized, oh my gosh, I got I have this video to do and I want to get home and like prepare and stuff. Um, and then I realized, oh, I rushed home and I left all of my stuff at school that I was going to talk about. So I have uh, my uh, fix, quick fix version of that because, um, you know, teachers were meant to improvise. So. Um, I have my improvised ideas, um, and I'm gonna share those with you today. So uh, if you're like, huh, that's, you don't have the puppet you're talking about, yeah, that's because I, I'm working on it. Um, also, Instagram, it's getting sort of dark, so I'm gonna just move this over really quick. Um, we'll see if this helps at all. I don't know, maybe it will. So um, I've been really busy the last uh, couple weeks. Um, I was able to do a district PD in Amarillo. Um, I did um, a workshop in South Carolina for the South Carolina Foothills Orf chapter. And um, I've been busy with a lot of life stuff going on. So um, sorry if things are a little <laughs> crazy disorganized, but that's what happens. Um, I'm hoping things are going to slow down a little bit. So in the next couple weeks, I'm planning to do some more podcasts, um, episodes. You can find those on Spotify or Google Play or Apple, wherever you find your podcasts. I'm also hoping to add a few new products um, and some blog posts. Um, in my store, one new product that I was able to add because I love candy corn so much, so I made it a priority. <laughs> um, I have a set of treble clef centers where it's like matching um, a word to the actual notes on the staff, and they are candy corn themed. So I knew that I was going to maybe pull them out for my classroom. I thought you might want them for yours too, so I put that on um, my teacher's pay teacher store. But anyway, uh, more things are coming in when life slows down. So never, because life is always busy. Um, just one quick recap if you want um, the if you want to go back and look at more of these videos or if you after the video today you're like huh there's that thing he talked about or that book or that resource he talked about where can I find that um, on my blog which is makemomentsmatter.org um, there's a tab that says videos or you can just type in makemomentsmatter.org slash videos and there's a, an archive of all the videos that have, um, there's even a spot that says uh, Musical Mondays Archive, and it has all the links that I, if I ever talk about anything, I put the links there so that you can just go and click through and find the stuff that you need a little bit easier. Uh, because it's hard to, you know, find all of that stuff. So um, I, I have all of those links there on that page, um, and if you're interested, go check it out. And all the archives, all of the videos are there too. Um, so my plan for today is I'm going to run through my K through five lessons for the week um, and give you just sort of a rundown of what I do with all my grades and then do a deep dive on first grade and share with you um, the games, the songs that I'm doing with them and sort of the process of how I do that. Um, so let me, let me get to that. Um, again, thanks everyone for joining me and I really appreciate if you are listening in and you have questions, if you leave a question, um, I'll try and answer those as I go. Um, or if you have a comment, um, it's great for other people to see that. It means that I'm not just sitting in my office talking to my iPhone. <laughs> and um, it means that you, you know, there's an actual conversation among music teachers. So I really appreciate when you leave comments on these videos and then comment on each other's comments. Or maybe um, there are a couple people who are really good about they see a question and they're like, oh, I know how I do that. And they leave a little reply. That's so cool. And that's what I really love is when music teachers get to actually talk about things and share ideas and resources. So if you have questions or comments, please leave those as we go. And I'll try and go back and answer all of those things. But um, if other people want to answer too, that'd be great. So here's my rundown of my lessons for the week. I'll just start with my youngest and go to the oldest. So uh, kindergarten, um, we start with our Choo Choo Train song. And this is only my sixth time that I've seen them, which feels crazy. But I've only seen them six times. Um, and so now the Choo Choo Train song has evolved. 
Um, and we're doing sort of crazier things. We're going around the room in different shapes. Um, I, I'm about to be at the point where I'm gonna split off and give one kid the chance to be the engine. Um, and I, I, the way I'll do that in the next lesson basically is I will be the second in the train line and um, they'll get to lead and I'll make sure that everyone else follows that kid. Um, but then eventually it'll be, there'll be two trains and I'll be leading one, another kid will be leading another and then we'll you know, move other kids around. But that's coming. So that's why I'm holding on to that song because there, there are a lot of fun things you can do with it. Um, then I do uh, let everyone clap hands like me. I've shared about that in a previous week. This time it's mostly kid suggestions. Um, so I do let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap hands like me. I do a whole verse of my own clapping and then I do um, tap head and then I do, uh, you know, something else depending on what the day is or if I'm feeling crazy, I'll just something like tap nose or whatever. And then I say, can a student give me an idea? And I let the students come up with ideas of things that they might want to do. And they come up with some fun things. We stomp feet, we uh, pat our shoulders. I mean, it's all, it's all kid ideas. So it's not necessarily anything that I have planted, but uh, something that they want to do. And I usually do boy, girl, boy, girl. One for a pattern, one so that they feel that it's fair um, for both. Um, and so I, I usually do that for kindergarten and, and do it at least for options from kids. We do our copycat game. Um, I take attendance. Um, this time I switch from where is Andrea to here I am. There you are. Now I'm going, hello, kindergarten. And they go, hello, Mr. Rao. Hello, kindergarten girls. Hello, Mr. Rao. And we do that three or four times. And then I do individual names. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Mr. Rao. And I am singling them out now, but they are singing just the same thing. They've been repeating, hello, Mr. Rao, for three or four times, so they're used to it. Um, but that's, it's fun. It's a good, it's a good spot in the progression, so that's where we go next. Uh, and then, when we're done with all of that and the copycatting and all those things, and that takes maybe 10 minutes of the lesson, all those things together, maybe 15, depending on the class, if they really need uh, some help. We uh, take a trip over to my green chair, my comfy green chair. It used to be my great grandma's chair. The kids love it. It's great for storytelling. And I um, do Itsy Bitsy Spider with them. I have a little spider puppet and it's not a creepy spider puppet. It's like a multicolor sort of tie-dye puppet. So I love it because spiders often are like scary, especially around Halloween. And for kindergarten, I don't really want that. So it's, it's a fun experience for them. Um, we move to another part of the room where I have... Um, it's really like the um, edging, like for um, landscaping, um, that you might find for like a flower bed. And it's um, just a little gate. Well, it's a little fence. It, it looks like a wrought iron fence, but it's actually, it's plastic. And so um, that leads to fi uh, five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. Um, and the kids have always loved that one. It's a, it's a fun little poem, um, but I use the actual fencing and I put little pumpkin foam cutouts on it and the kids think that's great. But I, I love to have a, a visual like that. And it wasn't until last year that somebody put that edging like out to be recycled. I was like, ooh, I will take that, which felt like a, I was dumpster diving. But it's great because it's like the perfect size. It fits in my room and it, it's a great visual and I don't actually like have to haul a fence in. It's, it's not that big, um, but I have a couple little pieces and it's, it's plastic. You could probably get it on sale brand new in a garden center right now because they're probably trying to liquidate it. Um, we, so we do five little pumpkins and this whole day is basically spent on talking about speaking voice and singing voice and then um, doing a little bit of sequencing in, in the songs. Um, and so as our capstone for the day, we watch a, just a tiny clip from the movie Enchanted um, where Giselle, is in the park and sings the song, uh, how do, how does she know you, she, or how does she know you love her? Anyway, how does she know that you love her? And it's this cute little song where she is walking along and talking and then she starts singing and her companion's like, no, 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 don't sing. And then someone else hears her singing and they start singing and other people start singing. And I mean, it's like a Disney magic situation where everything sort of comes to life, but the kids love it and we get to talk about singing voice and shouting voice and speaking voice. So it's super, super fun. Um, and I have the Enchanted DVD, so it's easy for me to just pop in. I'm not sure it's available online. Uh, you could maybe find it on YouTube, maybe, but I think Enchanted is not super expensive as a DVD. Check Amazon, I don't know. And then that's the end of my lesson. That's really all we have time for in the day. 
Um, I'm gonna skip first grade because I'm doing my deep dive on first grade, so I'll come back to that one. Um, second grade, uh, last so we, we come in, we do our circle song, we do our copycat game, um, we add in drums like we have for the couple, last couple weeks, we rotate through in drums and kids are playing back and forth with drums. Um, and then last week we learned the seven jumps song and I talked about that in a previous video, so I won't talk too much about that. Today is really sort of um, uh, remember how to do that and we do it and then also I let them move in locomotor ways around the room um, and then we stop and do each of the, the seven jumps. So I talked about that in the last video, so I won't bore you with that, but um, it's basically just, it's it's like a rock star lesson. They love that one, so they love that song, so we bring it back as a, something familiar that they already know how to do, and they just love doing it. So um, we try that, and then basically the rest of the class is spent learning the song Down the River. Um, and it goes, the river is up, the channel is deep, the wind is steady and strong. Oh, won't we have a jolly good time as we go sailing along? Down the river, oh, down the river, oh, down the river we go. Down the river, oh, down the river, oh, down the Ohio. And um, I teach it to them without movements at first. Um, and we, um, we do the song uh, sort of in pieces. And so I have them learn it sort of phrase by phrase. We have some basic rudimentary actions. Um, and then once we've learned it, um, I hand out ties to half the class. There are these pre-tied ties. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, how I use ties in my classroom. If not, I think I have a blog post about it. Um, but I, I hand out ties to half the class. And if you have a tie, your partner can't have a tie. If you don't have a tie, your partner has to have a tie. And that's how I find partners in my room because we're going to do a folk dance and a long waist set. So we need, we need couples. Um, so I, that's how I get them into their little duets. Um, we line up in our two long lines and then we learn the fun little folk dance. You can find a version of that online. You can find, um, I know Beth's Notes, um, the, the website that I've talked about before, Beth's Notes Plus, I believe it's called now, um, has a great version of online with a, a, um, examples and um, explanations of the dance. So you can check that out there and I'll put a link to that um, if anyone's interested. But it's a super fun song. Um, and it's a it's a great it's a great one for kids to do. It's a good introductory long way set song. So check that out. Um, and that's second grade. Third grade, we're getting ready for our concert. I've shared a little bit about that one before, um, and um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. There's a lot of recapping so that kids like remember <laughs> for the concert. So um, we do our attendance. Um, we talk a little bit about the rhythm sort that we did a few weeks ago. Um, we recap. Uh, the song Shoe Turkey, which I've talked about before. I know I blogged about that one too. Um, so we recap that one, sort of how to do it. We just do it one time. Um, and they're really good at it at this point, so they like doing it because they, they're good at it, so they like that. Um, we sit down and we learn a new song for the program. Um, we're learning Over the River and Through the Woods. It's a traditional Thanksgiving song, and parents are going to know it, and grandparents are going to know it. And it is a fun folk song. Um, and so we are going to add that one in and we're actually singing verses one and three. Um, we're not singing all the verses. There are a lot of verses. I did a favorite folk song set about this um, a, a couple years ago, which is that it's basically a PowerPoint with all of the history and vocabulary and everything you would need to teach the song. Um, I call that a favorite folk song kit. And it's in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. But I did one a couple years ago and this song has like eight verses. <laughs> so we're not going to learn all of them because there are, there are a lot of words. But basically the first verse is over the river and through the woods to grandfather's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through white and drifted snow. And so it, and every time you say to someone's house, it's grandfather's house. In verse three, the words change to grandmother's house. And we talk about the food we're going to eat there. So um, we have a grandfather verse and a grandmother verse. And I don't know, we might do an ABA because that really verse one is the one that everyone knows. Um, so I would extend the song a little bit, but I'm thinking of adding in, um, I'm not exactly sure how this would work, but some actions that look like we're in a horse and sleigh. I'll update you as I figure that out. Um, but we're for sure learning the words and, and, and singing verses one and three. And then before we run out of time, we recap the five fat turkeys game that I talked about in previous weeks. Um, and we sort of reenact and, and sing through and play through that song so that they remember it for next time um, and they get really good at it. Fourth grade, we're also getting ready for our winter program. 
Um, we're doing John Jacobson and John Higgins, um, a holiday moose sickle about Marty the Moose who wants to help pull Santa's sleigh. Um, so we learned one song last week. We're learning a new song this week. Um, it's really a cute, it's a cute, cute song or, or, or cute show and um, not super, um, I mean, it is a moose pulling Santa's sleigh, but it's really not super Santa-y. And it really is um, sort of just about getting along with one another. And, and there's some fun things. There's some harmonies in there. There's a partner song. It, it's, it's good musically for their age and it'll be a crowd pleaser. So um, fourth grade is the, is the grade that I do like the musical with. And so this is, this is us learning that. And then fifth grade, um, in our last lesson, we learned the folk song Tidy-O. Pass one window, Tidy-O. Pass two windows, Tidy-O. Pass three windows, Tidy-O. Jingle at the window, Tidy-O. Jinglin', 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 Joe. Jingle at the window, Tidy-O. They loved it. We added um, just a basic Bordeaux, the, um, the ostinato pattern, Will You Be My Friend. It's an ORF standard. And so they added that pattern, that ostinato on the bass instruments last time. This time I'm switching that pattern. So now we're doing a crossover Bordeaux and we're, um, so it's sort of like the next level for that song. Um, we're also adding in a color part. So um, the kids are chained, or they're taking off um, any bars that they need to to make C pentatonics. They're taking off Fs and Bs. And if they're not on a bass instrument, they're gonna be playing on the word tidio. Um, and so they play any notes they want. Bing, 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 bing. And since it's pentatonic, it fits in with the song. Um, and it's a, it's a fun addition. Um, and then on top of that, we're adding in the movements we learned the last time for a little partner um, hand clapping game to sort of go on top of it. Um, and it, depending on the class, I can alter or change, you know, how many kids are just gonna do the Bordeaux if that's what they, all need they can all just do that we won't worry about that color part that extra part and the other part on the um, xylophones galactic feels uh, the higher voices it really depends on the class and what they're able to do so um, but it's just sort of you take the song you add and you add and you add and you build um, and it becomes what it can become we've added, with a couple of classes we added in a contrabass bar um, to do the downbeat um, in a couple classes, we got creative and did a little bit of improvising on the instruments in a new made-up B section. It just depends on what your kids can do and what you want them to do. Okay, so that's my K-5 lessons. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm going to quick run through my questions here, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about first grade. Um, Jennifer asks, uh, what program do you use to create your games? I would love to tell you, uh, send me a message because it's a little bit easier to explain if I type that out. Um, let's see. Thanks for sharing. Yep. How do you know? Linda, thanks. It's a great song from Enchanted. And it's a great example for kindergarten. Um, I think they're great. Let's see. D says, I have my kids illustrate each phrase and they make a book about it. Oh, that's so cool. That'd be so cool to show like on a projector behind the kids as they're singing the song. That's great. Oh, and Joanna says, uh, we're also doing the same show, The Holiday Musical. It's a great show. John Jacobson is, he, he is doing really well for a reason. He's very good at what he does and his shows are great. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about first grade. Um, so first grade, I haven't talked about in a while. I. I most of the time really love first grade uh, because there's still a little bit of kindergarten in them where they, they're like pleasers, but they're like getting to be bigger kids. So I think first grade is a fun year um, and I love uh, doing stuff with first grade. Um, so in this class, um, they come in, we do our circle song. Um, the secretary for my school had never been down to my room at the beginning of class to see students do this. And today she walked by and I was just standing there with my ukulele playing and they walked in and were singing the circle song and made a circle and sat down on their own. And she was like, oh my God, that's magical. <laughs> I was like, yes, it is magical, but it's learned. Like it, it took them all last year to learn that. Um, but it's, it's nice now that I can, you know, if I need to check in with their teacher or she's like, oh, we have a new kid or this kid had an issue or something, you know, somebody says they're sick, but I don't think they're sick or, you know, whatever. I can stand there at the door and just play the ukulele part and the kids know how to come in and seat themselves. That has made my life so easy so that when I turn around and the door closes, we're in a circle and we're ready to go. 
it's amazing. I talked about that song in a previous episode, maybe the first or second. So um, you can go back and I think I posted the music for that um, if you're interested in that circle song. Um, they come in, we do our, um, our copycat, copycat game. Um, and I've added in hand drums. So we do a couple of versions. So we'll do uh, copycat, copycat, and I'll give them a four beat uh, clapping phrase and they'll clap back and I'll clap and they'll clap and I'll clap and they'll clap. And then we'll do our poem again. And maybe I'll do a vocal exploration. Whoop, and they go, whoop, and then I do woo, woo, woo. And they go, woo, woo, woo. And we do three or four of those. Um, and then we say the poem again. And then we do padding and then we say the poem again. And maybe we'll do, you know, a movement and then they'll do the movement. A copycat is just a great way for them to imitate and see a lot of different examples. Um, but then what I've added in is that I add in, um, I give every other student a hand drum and um, I see someone on Instagram asking about the poem. It's in the recap from a previous episode, but I'll be sure to put in the links for this episode, the copycat poem. Um, so I give each, every other kid a hand drum. And so if you have a drum, you copy my pattern on the drum. If you don't have a drum, you just copy my pat or you copy my uh, pattern clapping. And so um, it's, it's really fun and easy for them. It gives me a chance to um, have them do four beat patterns on an instrument. Um, different, I have different sizes of hand drums. I have five different sizes. So if we rotate two or, or we've, mostly about four times, each kid will get two different instruments. They'll get a different size at least. Um, and so it's fun for them to get those different instruments, to rotate, to learn how to do that, to get the repetition. And, and they really enjoy playing drums like right away in class. Um, and it's, it's been really successful. And then they stack the drums and then we go on from there. Um, after that, they're in the circle. We do attendance. We do our hello, first grade. Hello, Mr. Rao. And I sing hello back and forth. Um, we get all the kids to make sure they're there. Um, when we're in our circle, in the last week, we learned the grizzly bear game. Um, grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear was sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. And they, they get to yell that part, they love that. Um, we learned that last week. Um, so they know that song and they know the game. This is just sort of reiterating how to do that. And the way I do this song and game, um, it's, it's a circle song where the kids stand and hold hands. There's a kid in the middle, it's the bear. A kid on the outside is the zookeeper. And so um, on the word mad, the grizzly bear gets woken up from hibernation and he gets so angry and he um, storms out of the cave. He can choose, they all raise their hands on the word mad, all the kids, and he can choose any archway he wants to go under. But whichever archway he chooses, that's the only door that will stay open for him. All the others close. So once he's out of the circle, he has to get around the circle without the zookeeper catching him. And he has to get back in the circle through that same door. I use the same game for the Naughty Kitty Cat song. Um, I did a blog post about Naughty Kitty Cat. I also did um, a podcast episode about the Grizzly Bear song that explains it a little bit more in depth. Um, and it explains that like first week procedure of how I teach the song and go through it. So if you're interested, that's something you could listen to. It's episode, I think 14, um, on the podcast. Um, but today really what using the grizzly bear song is about is getting more kids a chance to rotate through and be the bear or the zookeeper. And then also to sort of get that idea of, of bear and zookeeper in their heads for the next activity. And also just to sing, it's fun, they love it. And again, starting with a song that they've done before makes them feel really successful right away um, and helps those kids who maybe had a hard time or maybe don't like to sing. This is their second time doing it. They've heard it before. Maybe they've sung it in the halls or on the playground. And so this gives them a chance to do it again um, in class and they love it. And it's a fun song. And so to rotate, what I've done, there are two ways I've done rotations for this so that we can get more kids through. Um, one option is whoever was the bear becomes the zookeeper and the zookeeper chooses a new bear to go in the center of the circle. You could rotate that way. That will not get you many kids rotated through. So um, what I did instead today is I said, the bear gets to choose a new bear, the zookeeper chooses a new zookeeper, and then you just are replaced. And that's an easy way to do rotation and you get two new kids every time instead of just one new kid every time. So it's nice to be able to, to do that quickly and get more kids through. And more kids can be the zookeeper or more kids can be the bear. And I don't, I don't usually say, I think maybe when I first learned this song, it was one kid will be the bear and one will be the hunter. 
and I don't want to talk about bears getting hunted because my next activity is about a bear. So in this, I say it's a zookeeper and he's, he's hunting for the bear, but he's hunting to take him to the zoo. Um, and that also syncs up with later in the year when I do Peter and the Wolf, um, my version of Peter and the Wolf that I teach kids uh, is the David Bowie version. In that version, he says, oh, now that we've caught the wolf, we're gonna take him to the zoo. So it's like a theme that shows up throughout the year. And I'm pretty sure that first grade, their field trip at the end of the year is to the zoo. So like connection, 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 connection. <laughs> anyway, so that's the grizzly bear game. Um, and they love, they love that game. Um, so grizzly bear, grizzly bear is a super huge hit. And like I said, it's podcast number 14. If you wanna learn my whole process for that one um, from start to finish. But the Grizzly Bear song is great because our next activity it, um, takes us to the book Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? So um, once we're done grizzly bearing for, I don't know, you know, a few minutes, depending on how much they can handle, because if you do all the kids, the ones who have gone get restless, if you do only a few kids, the kid, they don't feel like they've gotten a real chance at it. So I try and do at least four or five different pairs of kids as the bear and the zookeeper. Um, it gets a little bit of energy out. It gets them very excited and they get a sing and they love it, but it's not doing the whole class. And I think that's okay because you'll get to do it again in the next lesson um, or down the road. And it, it's, it's okay to, to leave them wanting more and to want to do that song again. Um, so we go back to, over to my great grandma's green comfy chair um, and I pull out this book. Well, actually, before I pull out the book, I say, you know, we just sang a song about a grizzly bear. Um, can you think of another kind of bear. Raise your hand if you can tell me another kind of bear. And I've gotten some very interesting answers um, from kids, um, but usually brown bear shows up, black bear. Um, in this one, I had someone say, a real bear. Okay, well, what does that mean? You know, but kid, you know, it, it's interesting because kids don't have um, always the words to put to that because, you know, maybe they know of a bear, but they don't know that there are different kinds of bear or they can't name them. So um, it's exciting to sort of see what they come up with and then maybe put some words to it. So when I say, oh, real bear, what do you mean by that? Um, or, you know, polar bear, polar bear, polar bear, polar bear. Okay, they're all saying polar bear. Interesting, you know, did they do a, a video or something about a polar bear in their classroom? Um, but it's, it's good to give them a couple different examples. So I usually say, if they don't say them, brown bear, black bear, grizzly bear, polar bear. I say panda bear, even though a panda's, mm, I don't know if, if it really qualifies as a bear. A koala bear definitely doesn't qualify as a bear, but I say it anyway um, because it has the word bear in it, so vocabulary. And then I have a teddy bear right there that sits in grandma's chair. If a kid ever gets, you know, like bonked on the head or something, they get to go like, cool down in that chair. So that's why the teddy bear's there anyway. Um, so I say, oh, teddy bear, they think that's funny. Um, since it's not a real bear. And then I say, you know, there's one of those bears that I do want to talk about and it's that polar bear. And I bring out this book. Most of the kids have done, not polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? Most of the kids have done, um, oh, and there's not a picture in this one. Um, oh yeah, on the back. Most of the kids have done brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Some of them have done panda bear, panda bear, what do you see? Um, but a lot of them haven't done polar bear, which is cool because I get to do it with them. Um, I have, there are a couple things I do with this. Um, the, the version I'm going to show you is something I sort of took and borrowed from my friend, um, Andrew Ellingson, who's a brilliant teacher, teaches in Decorah, Iowa. There's also a really great blog post from Tracy King, the bulletin board lady that I have linked on my links page, um, with her extension for this book. But if you go to Pinterest and you type in this book, um, and music, I would put, and music or music ed, because if you don't, you're gonna get all those classroom teacher lessons that maybe apply, but probably don't apply. If you do polar bear, polar, polar bear, polar bear, and music ed, um, you can find some really cool things on Pinterest or Google. Um, but basically, uh, you know, what I did with this book um, is, you know, I sing the first part, Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I'm using a so me interval, but you could use whatever you want. You could do so me lot. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? Um, it really depends on what you're emphasizing, but for me, I'm trying to do so me. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. A lion with a polar bear? What? Oh, here on the next page. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. And I realize this is um, sort of 
not exactly what I'm used to because the, I have the board book at home. Um, at school, I bought a paperback version at my most recent Scholastic Book Fair that was maybe $4.99 or $5.99. It's bigger than this board book. The board book is made, it says My First Reader, and so it's maybe modified a little bit. Um, in the, the paperback version I have, um, the words lion, lion, what do you hear appear here? And on this page it says, I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. And you have those words here before the picture of the hippo actually shows up. In the board book, the words I hear a hippo are with the hippo. So um, it's just a little change. But um, I also am modifying already. Um, it says, I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. That doesn't sing very well. Um, so I go to, I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. And I change that and make it just a little bit easier. Um, so I go through the whole song. It goes through a lot of fun animals. Hippo, flamingo, zebra. Uh, let's see, boa constrictor. Again, I change that one to, I hear a boa hissing in my ear. Because to have first graders here say, uh, do, I hear a boa constrictor, that is hard for them. So I just do boa. And some kids are like, what's a boa? And then I switch the next page to like, oh, it's a, it's a snake. And I say, yeah, and its long name is boa constrictor, but we're gonna sing boa. Okay, so at this point, they've, they like want to sing along because they know it's an interval they've heard before. It feels like something they should be able to do, but they don't know what animal's coming next. So it's sort of difficult for them to sing along. I sing all the way through. This one's also tricky for them because we're the wildcats and at our school we have different packs, which are like teams throughout the school, sort of like, I don't know, Ron Clark or Harry Potter, or whatever, um, where each team like earns points. Um, they want to say cheetah, because cheetah is one of the packs. And then they want to say jaguar, which is not even close, but that's another one of our packs. But leopard is not one of our packs, so that that's sort of hard for them, but they, they deal with it. So we go through uh, Peacock, Walrus is the last one. And Walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. So this connects to the grizzly bear song, which we just did, who the zookeeper came looking for the bear. Well, then this is a great connection point because it's a zookeeper and it starts with a bear. And then the zookeeper, what do you hear? Well, he hears children acting like or sounding like, growling like a polar bear, roaring like a lion, snorting like a hippo, fluting like a flamingo and so on and so on. I hear flamingo, that's what I hear. So that's sort of a cool, um, it's a really cool book. Um, and then, you know, on this page, this is only in the reader version, the board book version, and it has the names of all the animals along with the pictures, because it says, what animal names can you read? Can you match the words to the pictures? Well, this is obviously like a my first reader activity, but what I do, it's nice to have this if you want with kids to show them just the pictures all on one page. Uh, because the only, in the, the the paperback book that I have, the only way you get that is this, and it's kids in animal costumes. So it's sort of cool to have um, that page here in the reader version of the actual animals. But what we do is we go back and um, we sing through it again, or we sing through it together actually as a class. And so I say, you know, polar bear, can you sing polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? You ask him and I will respond with a polar bear. So the kids go polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? And he says, I hear a lion roaring in my ear. And then I say, okay, now your job is to go lion, lion, what do you hear? Oh, great. And then I'll respond for the lion. And so we go through and the kids sing that and it's, it's so easy and so simple, but they love it. And they love that what they have to listen for the word that, that I sing to them, because what is the line here? I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. And then they can sing hippo, hippo. And again, with my, with my book at school, I'm sorry I didn't bring it home, it has the word on this page, it has I hear a hippo. So I can sing that, and then as I'm flipping, they can sing the next part because they already know the word. So if you have like one of the board book versions, you might want to just like look ahead so you can sing that so that they can, they can sing their part as you're flipping. Um, and of course it's, it's Eric Carl. So it's um, a really beautiful illustration. So um, it's fun for kids to see that um, and to try it. At the very end, um, I do show the pictures of the kids in the costumes and I like to say, hmm, who can tell me what this animal is? What do you think this one is? It doesn't look exactly like the animal picture, but which one do you think it is? And so I'll have kids answer, oh yeah, 
they'll raise their hand, they'll do, oh, I think it's the boa constrictor. Yeah, it's the boa constrictor, but it's different because when the kid is dressed up in that, you know, boas don't have arms or legs, but the kid does, right? So he, they're sort of dressed up. So that's, okay, that's interesting. And we go through each one of them. And then I can make a connection and say, you know, I think it's about the time of year when kids like to get dressed up like animals or creatures or something that they might like or superheroes. And they might dress up just like the kids in this story. Can you think of what that special day is that some people celebrate where people dress up and maybe like go get candy and they're like, okay, segue. <laughs> Obviously they're like, yes. And they then we, we talk a little bit about Halloween and sometimes we'll talk about like what you might do um, because, um, because kids like to talk about that. And I see the, uh, Maribel asked a question, do you sing all the way through the book by yourself and then go back to the beginning and sing it again with call and response? Yes, I do that. Because I want them to see the format of the book and the first time through they, they can't sing along because they don't know the animal that's coming. So yes, I go all the way through and it takes me a total of like a minute and a half because it's not very difficult, but uh, maybe two and a half minutes if I really linger on the pages. And then they sing back the second time and they're all about that. And they'd probably sing it in the next lesson if I went back and did that, but we don't have to do that. And I see that somebody on Facebook put a link for a polar bear, polar bear song you use in a, uh, I can't read your full comment, sorry, Andrea. Sing is something, thanks. I can't, I can't read the full comment on the live video, but um, check out Andrea's comment on Facebook. Okay, um, so it's a pretty easy segue to kids in costumes to kids in costumes at Halloween. Um, and I say, you know, I'm, I was decorating at home for Halloween and one of the things I love about the fall, not just Halloween, but about fall in general is I love pumpkins. I love pumpkins because they're so pretty and they're big and they're orange, they're bright colors. And also they're great for making pumpkin pie and eating toasted pumpkin seeds. And then you can have pumpkin spice latte or whatever. And you can make a little, you can talk a little bit about that. And I said, I went to the pumpkin patch and I wanted to find the biggest pumpkin of all. And I went through the pumpkin patch and I looked for a pumpkin just like this. Um, and I sing, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine. I picked the one that weighed a ton. That's the one that's mine. Kids take to this song pretty quickly because it's Farmer in the Dell. So if they know the melody for Farmer in the Dell, they can pretty quickly join in with the song. But I usually sing it a couple times and I might talk about, you know, pumpkins don't grow on trees. Pumpkins don't grow on bushes. Pumpkins don't grow on mm, in the ground or under the ground like peanuts because we had that conversation when we did the peanut butter and jelly song a few weeks ago. Um, but I say, you know, pumpkins grow on a vine. So make a little pumpkin with your hand and then bring your vine in and connect your pumpkin with your vine. Great, so then they do that. See, how about you do that action while I sing? The pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine. Ooh, maybe we could change like this. The pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, and connect your vine to your pumpkin. So they do that, and they say, we, I picked the one that weighed a ton, and they think that's super fun. And we talk about a ton being a thousand pounds, but a lot of times people just say, oh, it weighed a ton, or I ate a ton, or, uh, you know, a ton sometimes doesn't mean actual thousand. Some people use it to exaggerate. And I talk a little bit about that, um, but just very briefly, and then we sing. We sing the whole first part. Um, and they, they like the song. And we talk about going to the pumpkin patch and finding a pumpkin and looking for the biggest one. Um, and so we sing all the way through until I know that they've got it. And then I say, I have a new part of the song. We've only been singing the first part of the song, but there's another part of the song. The next part of the song goes like this. It goes, it's what you sing as you're walking around looking for your pumpkin. The next part of the song goes like this. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine. Pumpkin, pumpkin, that's the one that's mine. And when you found the pumpkin you really want, you go, that's the one that's mine. Can you try that action? That's the one that's mine. Oh, they love that. Now, I'm gonna sing and you get to do the other action. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine. Pumpkin, pumpkin, that's the one that's mine. And we sort of piece through how to do that. They learn to sing it. And now they have the whole second part. Pumpkin on the Vine, the, the, the first part of the song, the A section, is something that I sang when I was little. 
um, a couple years ago when I knew that I was going to be doing a, um, in this quarter songs about f form and trying to get ABA form with kids, um, I made up the B section. Um, and again, it's just a so me, so me interval uh, because again, that was another thing I was working on at the time. But I've pulled out this song every year because kids like it and, and it, it works pretty easily. Um, so now we know the first part and the second part. So I say now we're going to put it together, but look up at the board and on the board I have um, some foam um, like die cuts of pumpkins. I bought them years ago at like Target or Michaels or something, um, but they're just bright orange foam cutouts. Um, and I, on the top of them, I took a little piece of green um, yarn and I tied from one to the next and there are magnets on the back. So they're magneted up on my whiteboard and there's that green piece of yarn connecting them. Well, then I have three separate pumpkins with a little piece of green yarn going up and a paper clip and they just hook onto that long line. So it looks like that green piece of yarn is the vine and the other pumpkins are connected to it. Of course I left that at school because I was gonna talk about it today. So I left that at school, but I did a blog post about pumpkin on the vine and um, it's linked in the, in the links, um, but there's a picture of the pumpkins with the vine. And so tonight I came home and I was like freaking out. I don't have anything that I was gonna talk about. And then I realized, oh yeah, I make all these Halloween resources. I have all this clip art of pumpkins anyway. Um, so what I did was I just hopped on, of course my printer's not working correctly, but I hopped on and I made um, some little pumpkins with letters on them. Because on the back of my phone letters at school are A and B. Um, and if you want these, these are a free download and I put these on the links page um, for this video. So, because I figure like I'm, I've got a version for myself. If you want it, you can have it. Um, and that's on the downloads page um, on my blog. Not in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, it's just on my blog for this video if you want it. So what I do with the vi what I do with um, the song though is that I have three pumpkins and on one side they're just blank, they're just blank pumpkins. So what I do is that I say, you know, there are three parts to the song and I'm gonna have you help me figure out what parts they are. So the first part of the song goes like this. The pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine. I picked the one that weighed a ton, that's the one that's mine. And I say, usually when we're trying to figure out how a song goes together, the first part, we call it A, because A is the first letter in the alphabet. So if it's the first one, we usually call it A. And I flip over my little pumpkin and there's a, a letter A on it. So I hook that onto my little green vine and I've got the A there. And I say, you know, there's a way to show A in sign language, you just take your hand and put it like this. And so we do A. Um, I'm, I'm trying, I just went to a workshop about PSYOP, I think it's called, struck, uh, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's for English language learners. Um, it's an intervention, something, protocol. Rita, if you're watching, please help me remember what it's called. But um, a uh, part of what um, the presenter was talking about was it's great to have actions and uh, like a physical um, thing that you could put with different words or forms and it helps kids learn better. And so we added just the A for sign language for this A section. Um, and so then I say, oh, you know, that's perfect because you've already got the pumpkin on the vine and that can be sort of like your pumpkin. So they connect that up and we sing and we learn that's the A section. The next little blank pumpkin is just sitting there and I say, now, if this next pumpkin goes like this, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, we'd have to call the next part another A. If it sounds different, we'll have to call it something else. And they're already like, me, because they learn about patterns in their kindergarten class and their first grade class. They're, they're like, you know, their classroom teachers are training them to look for and find patterns. So um, on the back of my little you know, pumpkin is a bee. I know that, but they don't know that that's there yet. So um, I do, okay, so listen carefully. If it sounds like this, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, then we'll have to call it A. And then, so I sing, okay, here's the next part. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. And they're like prepared, like to know that that's what it is. So instead I flip around and there's a bee. Okay, I'm sorry, it's backwards because it's my FaceTime camera and not my, so if you're looking at this and you're like, that letter's backwards. I didn't print it backwards, it's just, the camera. So we've got A and we've got B. Okay, so then we sing it. We sing the A part, we sing the B part. But there's still that third pumpkin that is yet to be revealed. So I say, okay, great. If it sounds like the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, then we'll have A, B, A. And if it sounds like pumpkin, pumpkin, that third pumpkin, if it sounds like that, then we'll have A, B, B. Oh, okay. 
So then, oh, what if it sounds different? What would we call a new part? Something that's totally different. Let's say A, B, C. We'd have to call it a C. Okay, well, let's listen to what it is. It's another A section because I'm going for ABA form. So when they hear it, we flip it over and we learn it. And then we sing the whole song. We sing A, B, A form. Um, and then we're basically then we're out of time for class. What happens in the next lesson, there's a really cute video from um, whatever the Charlie Brown Snoopy thing is for Halloween, the Great Pumpkin or Magic Pumpkin. I don't remember what it's called. I never got to watch that as a kid. But um, I uh, pulled a clip where they go to the pumpkin patch looking for a pumpkin. And of course, Lucy is like, chooses the hugest pumpkin ever and Charlie has to carry it back. So we watch this like, it's like a minute long clip. And then we sing the song and what kids get to do, um, I have several different A's and B's printed out or, or on those little foam pumpkins and they all have their little strings and the kids get to decide what order they go in. So the kids might choose A, A, B, or they might choose A, B, B, or they might choose B, A, B, or whatever. And then choose, kids get to change the form and whatever they choose, we have to sing it. So they've learned in this particular lesson which what the A part is and what the B part is. So in the next one, it's easy for anyone to move things around and they're able to sing it. And that is so fun. They love doing it. They like love having the control, but also it's so simple and easy that it's just fun for them to do. I had one kid one time like put like three A's in a row and I was like, this is gonna be so long. <laughs> Cause I think a couple times I've like played it at the piano to help kids along, but they do the actions, you know, for whatever part it is and they absolutely love it. But when he had like three A's in a row, I was like, oh, actually it wasn't even the A's in a row. It was like three B's in a row. Cause it was like pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the line. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. And we had to do that like three times in a row. It was really, really long. Anyway, these, um, these letters on the little pumpkins are available uh, for free as a download on the downloads page. So if you're on Facebook right now, um, in the little caption for this video, there's a link at the bottom that says, that'll take you directly there. And if you're watching on Instagram, there's a link in my profile, but also it's makemomentsmatter.org slash video. And down at the bottom is the Make Mom uh, Musical Mondays recap. You can find that link there. Um, they print it off, of course my printer's not working right, a little weird, so these are actually darker green in the picture, but um, you can have that if you want. So a couple other things that I'm adding in in the next couple weeks, um, I'm adding in that Charlie Brown video, which they're gonna really like. Um, we might bring the polar bear book back, but probably not because we have some other things that we need to do. Um, we did, in the last week we did a song, uh, Matilda Gorilla, Matilda the Gorilla will probably bring her back um, because there's, that's a pretty easy verse and chorus, so we could relate that to ABA if we want. Um, but there's just some really fun things we can do. Um, and all of these things are really hitting the standards that I'm supposed to be going for um, in this grade. So um, there are standards about singing ac accompanied and unaccompanied songs and melodies in the limited range. Well, that's really what we're doing. Um, we're also able to add in um, movement to the different parts that matches uh, the form, which is another one of our Georgia standards, is um, using movement to display different contrasts in music and um, musical sections and musical forms. Um, so there's a, there's a lot we can do. Um, I want to bring back some instrument work in the next couple weeks, but there are a lot of fun things we can do. Um, a couple of y'all were asking about um, a few weeks ago. I I shared my everything stew um, video that I, or a video about that that I do a third grade, and that's going to turn into our uh, performance. Um, the Everything Stew visuals are free in the links page, so you can go and download those if you want. Um, and then the cards we use are the rhythm cards that have um, a food and a rhythm on them. Um, and we use these just for a lot of different stuff. Um, on my Teachers Pay Teachers store, these are called rhythm sorts. But the one we use uh, for the fall a lot is the fall food festival. So um, all different fall foods from, you know, pumpkin latte to cookie and jam and apple and apple pie and pumpkin pie and all of that. But there's also a Halloween version if you're interested. There's also a Christmas version. There's a normal foods version, a sea animals version. There are lots of options. But that's another thing that's going to come back in a couple different grades for me. Um, and I know when you're like, if, if later on you're like, I'm inspired, I want to use that. But printing and laminating these things takes time. So I thought I would just bring that back and mention that now in case you're interested Now's the time to really get on Pinterest and start looking for those Thanksgiving things. So I've been trying to pin a lot more of those. If you want to look through my Pinterest page, 
because it, like I said, it takes a while to get some of those things created. So um, I know there's a lot going on in these, these months, but the more you can sort of look ahead, the more you'll set yourself up for success. If you're like already planning out your Thanksgiving stuff, already sort of planning some of that Christmas stuff to get all those resources pulled together so that you're not scrambling at the last second to like, I need a game to, you know, be a so me game or whatever that has, you know, whatever. So especially stuff like this, my fall food festival things I printed out like years ago and I use them all the time. So it's, it's nice to have that option available to you. Um, I'm just going to quick run through questions here. Um, Meg says she loves the pumpkin song. Meg, if you want, like I said, there is a blog post all about it and it's on the links page. Um, so you can just zoop right to it. But um, on my blog, you can search uh, the pumpkin on the vine and it's a, there's a whole blog post about how I do it in the process and you can see a picture of the actual pumpkins I was supposed to bring home but I forgot. Um, Andrea, thanks so much for posting the link on Facebook for the Polar Bear Polar Bear video. I will put that on the links page in case you want to find it and you're an Instagram person. Um, I'll put that on there so you can go back and look at that if you're interested. Uh, kids say the craziest things. Yes, Karen, they sure do. <laughs> um... Peter and the Wolf, yep. Peter the, Wolf. the David Bowie version is the best. It really is. Let's see. And I think I got to all of those other things. Okay, well, thanks so much, everyone, for coming along this week. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm hoping to get back to a little bit of normalcy since I have um, a few big presentations out of the way. My brain is like, the cash is clearing out. So I'm hoping to do a few more uh, podcasts and blog, blog posts in the coming weeks. Thanks so much for all of your messages and questions and ideas that you share. The more that we um, share together, the more this is more of a music ed community. And that's really what I hope we can do more of just across the board in all places. It was so cool to be um, at the professional development in Amarillo and then to do professional development for an ORF chapter. I just love spending time with music education communities and, and getting to experience learning with them and sharing with them and moving and dancing with, with a different music education communities. Um, think ahead to if you are interested in coming to a national conference or coming to a local conference. A lot of uh, big conferences are coming up. I know North Carolina Music Educators is one of the first of the season of those uh, state music ed conferences. Um, I know the National ORF Conference is coming up um, because I'm going. I know that um, I think the Oak Conference is coming up sometime, but could I people help me out with that? If nothing else, find your local chapter. Um, find your local ORF chapter, your local Kodai chapter, or just a group of music teachers and find a way to connect because it's absolutely worth your time. So that's another thing to look ahead and plan on. So start doing that now. Thanks so much everyone for, for joining me. If you have follow-up questions, send me those emails or leave comments. Um, but if not, have a great week and I'll see you next Monday. Thanks everyone.